everybody to our first regular scheduled city council meeting for the month of December. Today is Tuesday, December 3rd, 2013. It is 6.02 p.m. I do call this meeting to order. And let's uh, begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone please rise and raise the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and we'll have uh, Sandy read the clerk's open meeting statement for us. This meeting and all other meetings of the Common Council are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the press in accordance with Wisconsin state statutes, so the citizens may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. And take roll for us, too, Sandy. Brian Smith? Here. Steve Hackett? Here. Deb Fenske? Here. Paul Hagen? Here. Alan Keeland? Here. Scott Prochatsky? Here. Dave Shambo? Here. Paul Mayo? Here. John Lockwood? Here. Jillian Peterson? Here. And Eric Olson? Here. Ten present. We have a quorum. Thanks, Sandy. Mm -hmm. We have the consent agenda. There's just a few items on that consent agenda for tonight. Uh, are there any items that council or staff would like to see move from the consent agenda to the regular agenda where we would vote on those as individual items? If not, uh, we would need a motion to approve the consent agenda as a printed. So moved. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Lockwood, that we approve the consent agenda as printed. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. A regular agenda. Sandy, you want to just tell us what we, in addition to what we have? Under number nine, unfinished business number one. Information was distributed regarding the discussion on the public works facility options. Okay, and that's the only new addition that we have mm -hmm. for tonight. Um, so again, uh, anybody would like to see the agenda changed around at all, or are we okay with the uh, with the way it's set up for tonight? If so, again, we need to... I'll make to a motion to approve the agenda with the handout. Second. Motion by Shambo, second by Olson, that we approve the regular agenda with that one additional handout. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Let's uh, move on then to uh, new business. We have the resolution number 1334. This is a resolution vacating a portion of Old County Trunk K and Shadow Road, City of Opaka, Wisconsin. Um, and this is uh, City Attorney John Hart. Um, I think, I believe everybody's aware of where that property is. It's on, it's uh, two portions of road that way that was intercepted by the Highway 10 probably 30 years ago. These things dead end. They do have a barricade on one of them. Uh, there's no use to it and basically uh, the one couple that lives at the end of the one finger of that uh, road would like to have the, their portion be a private driveway and they would maintain it. It is difficult for the city to maintain that and expensive to maintain that part of the road due to plowing and the rest of it. So this would get this off of the city's work list and put it on the private landowners. The other landowner probably will just up the pavement that there and it'll go back to... Uh, just, I, I think they want to take that out. Again. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it would, it would go, it would not be responsibility for city maintenance. It, it's getting rid of a lot of maintenance that is not to anybody's use, and the people that own it are all on board with this and would like to see it done. So. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Um, any questions? We're looking for a motion. Make a motion. We approve resolution number 1334. <coughs> Second. Motion by Lockwood, second by Hackett, that the council will approve resolution number 1334. This is a resolution vacating a portion of Old County Highway Trunk K and Shadow Road, uh, City of Opaka, Wisconsin. Any discussion? If not, uh, Sandy will call the roll. Paul Meal. Aye. Jillian Peterson. Aye. Dave Shambo. Aye. Eric Olson? Aye. 
John Lockwood? Aye. Paul Hagen? Aye. Deb Fenske? Aye. Scott Prochatsky? Aye. Steve Hackett? Aye. And Alan Keeland? Aye. Ten ayes, motion carried. Mayor, if I could just add, this is about three years worth of work to get to this document, and I appreciate uh, Attorney Hart's uh, assistance with this and perseverance and uh, um, making this happen. So, and this was staff initiated. So uh, again, appreciate everyone's support. Okay. Awesome. All right, uh, let's move on to number two under new business. Then we have a uh, review of Assembly Bill 169 as it pertains to a pedal tavern. So, uh, Chief Golk. I just really wanted to bring this to your attention um, to educate you a little bit on this Assembly Bill 169 as it currently sits. When this was first introduced a couple of months ago, it was drafted such that if, if municipalities wanted to allow this, they'd have to create an ordinance to allow it. It has since been changed to basically make it a state law. So uh, there is a lot of legislative support behind this and it's kind of fast tracking. So that change means that state law, if you wanted to prohibit it, you'd have to create an ordinance to prohibit it. And again, this hasn't been passed yet, it hasn't been signed by the governor, but all in indicators uh, lead towards the likelihood that it is going to be passed. And I never really knew what they were before, and I had to give you a picture in there because I couldn't even describe what it is. But uh, essentially, it's pedal powered and it'd be uh, a class B license like a lot of places would be, but it's mobile and it goes throughout the community. And if the state law does get passed and you don't take any action, then anybody could apply for a class B like they do now and they'd be allowed to do this. So really I just wanted to bring this to your attention and that if there was any interest to look into this further, I guess it would probably have to come from council. But this is kind of one of those back burner fast track um, governor bills that's being brought forward. Chief, uh, we would have the ability though as a city to deny these? Not without an ordinance. I mean, we but can deny. With a city ordinance, we could deny. Right. If we didn't have an ordinance in place and the law was passed, if someone came and applied, there's only certain criteria that you could deny a license for. Um, simply because you don't like the idea, generally it's not going to work. So you'd have to actually prohibit it. So if we were to agree that we didn't want these in our community, we would have to pass this ordinance before the assembly bill? Huh? No, I think you'd want to wait until it was signed into law. Okay. I know what it is. But um, according to the Chiefs Association, that could be within a month. Have you heard through your grapevine and Henry yours that uh, <coughs> there is opposition from the communities at all? Or have you heard anything? There is opposition from law enforcement. There, well, obviously. obviously. But, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And, well, and, um, just one comment. I don't know how this is going to final thing is going to come down, but there is a provision in there that any of the occupants of such a pedal tavern can only have a blood alcohol level of 0.02 at any time, and the the drunk driving law is 0.08. So they can't drink much beer. I don't know how popular this would be. On the other hand, it is a nightmare for law enforcement because. I mean, how do you figure out who's drinking what and what their alcohol level is and whether they're violating the law? So it would really be trouble for enforcement of the of the ordinance or at least at least the, the bill that I reviewed briefly as to what they could do and how much alcohol can be consumed. That's about one beer an hour. And they're going to have some empty stools at that rate. But so on, on the picture that you see, there's, there's like a barrel in there somewhere, and there's a bartender in there yeah. serving people around this table that yeah, pedals down the street. It's it is a law enforcement nightmare. And again, I'm not asking for any action. I just want to bring yeah. this to your attention, saying this is something that's out there, and uh, it may be coming forward. John, go wouldn't, uh, wouldn't somebody have to apply to get a bartender's license? And sure. before the right, but you can't deny a bartender's license because you don't like what they do. Oh right, no, I understand that, but they would they would still be sure. Yeah, uh, but then you the, could they'd have to meet the the current criteria that we have right. for bartenders right for now. For bartenders, yes. Mm -hmm. And yep. right now these are illegal in the state of Wisconsin. Correct. It hasn't been signed yet. If this passes and somebody applies in the city for one of these pedal taverns and we are 
required to approve it because we don't have an ordin ordinance, are they then grandfathered in uh, when we do pass mm. an ordinance, if we pass one? Yeah, that's a good question. That was my question. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I exactly. guess that could be directed John, to John. John, what do you think? Hart. Well, there's ways of not passing that license. You can probably bring that up and continue it and stall it for a while and then get your ordinance passed. I mean, it's sure. pretty easy to do that. Sure. And not act on it for whatever reason. Sure. Okay. I don't think that's a problem. You can get an ordinance in front of the council pretty easily sure. once that's been passed. It's fun to me. Okay. Thank you for the information. Uh, council, do we want to go on? I guess we just let it run through. I, you know, in the past when we don't agree with some of the things that uh, are happening at the state level, we do try to ask Henry to, or or myself, write a letter to our local representatives or our state representatives that uh, whether we're in agreement or not. But in this case, we do have the ability to, if we don't like it, to pass an ordinance in the future to deny that if if we so choose. So. I think we're okay there. Mayor? Yes. What I don't like about it, uh, it sounds like a lot of fun, actually, but uh, aside from that, <laughs> what I don't like about it, it's a business uh, that is operating without paying property taxes. Um, uh, similar to the way those, uh, those uh, food vehicles uh, that park outside on a, on a curb, and I mean, not in this city, but in other cities. They're competing with businesses uh, that are brick and mortar that pay property taxes, and they don't have to pay property taxes themselves. And I think this is in the same category, and I don't like that. Didn't we have one of these in town for an event, or we had a pedal thing? I don't know if they were able to drink. I it was a pedal thing. Yeah, well, I thought we had one. For an oh, event. you were just riding your bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you right now, I cannot drink a beer and pedal a bike <laughs> at the same time. So. All right. Thank you, Chief. Keep us informed. All right. Let's uh, move on to uh, uh, the next is uh, this is a contract. The city will pack out for our waste collection. Uh, John, you want to take this? Sure. Uh, Russ Montgomery has uh, solicited quotes from uh, three different firms or Waste collection in the city, you can see it's through the different departments, um, fire district, airport, water, wastewater, uh, library, city hall, park and rec, and uh, police. And uh, we did receive quotes from um, three different firms. Uh, they're all a little bit different, but Gratian was the low bidder. Uh, you can see with waste in advance, there are still um, some possible additional fees. Um, including taxes and fuel fees that aren't always that clear as to what the costs are. There are also environmental fees and uh, administrative fees that are included in that rate. Um, but with this proposal, if we were to contract with Gratian, um, it's about, what well, it'll be 850 plus tax and fuel fee. So that could be about $1,000 savings a year. Uh, we do have some seasonal uh, additional dumpsters that are used by the street streets and parks department. Um, so that we did have to factor that into our analysis. So staff is recommending that we do proceed with Gratian um, as the um, waste disposal firm uh, providing city services. Uh, this would be effective February, although I believe the airport would be able to proceed earlier than that. Okay. Any questions? Motion? I'll make a motion to approve the contract with Gratian for recycling second and sanitation <clears throat> both yeah yeah there you go thanks motion by Hackett uh, second by Keelan that the city enter into a one-year contract with Gratian sanitation and recycling for our recycling and sanitation any discussion if not uh, Sandy will take the roll Eric Olson hi Jillian Peterson hi Alan Keeland hi Scott Prochatsky? Aye. Deb Fenske? Aye. Paul Mayo? Aye. Steve Hackett? Aye. Dave Shambo? Aye. Paul Hagen? Aye. And John Lockwood? Aye. Ten ayes, motion carried. All right. Uh, next up, then, we have our South Park Playground Bid Award and Aaron. Thank you, Mayor. 
Um, as you guys know, we were bidding out the South Park Playground uh, just to kind of review real quick. Uh, we did get eight bids in. Um, I believe that is in your packets, the bid tabulation. Um, as you can see, the one that we're recommending is Northland Recreation out of Woodbury, Minnesota, um, and it is the fourth highest. Um, I will say, I just want to speak to this, I guess. Um, when you throw out a, a bid uh, for a playground equipment it's I wouldn't say it's the same or I would argue that it's not the same as a tractor um, or a truck where you can spec out exactly you're basically getting the same thing a lot of this um, has to do with their design and what they come up with and how much equipment that they produce um, and I, I do want to say that our just to remind everyone our budget is eighty thousand um, dollars it did come in at seventy nine thousand nine hundred fifteen now just to be clear that does not include um, the poured curb um, and the concrete for the bases of the poles, which is an estimated 7,500. Um, one reason for going with Northland Recreation was staff believed that it was uh, by far and away more equipment than, than any of the lower bids and actually any of the higher bids as well. Um, and with that, there is some opportunities to, if we, if we have to cut, uh, there are some very small changes that probably the normal citizen would not even notice um, taking out of the playground that can cut that and I do want to show uh, you guys some of those options right now um, so I guess we could well we'll talk about it after but Brennan would you mind uh, helping me grab this poster board here <coughs> Council members, it'd probably be easier if you guys came around this thing in front, if that's okay. Would that be all right you guys, Mayor? Sure. Okay? Absolutely. You're in charge, right? All right. Use this lawyer. All right, um, as you yeah, it is. Okay. As you guys um, have gotten in your packet, this is just a, a bigger version of what you guys see. I know it was pretty small in your packet, hard to tell what was going on. I do want to say that I did talk with Bill Johnson, who would be our rep for this project uh, this afternoon. Um, and we kind of came up with a plan that can cut this project to $72,500, which would allow for the $7,500 for the concrete curb um, and, the, and the footings for the poles. Um, I just want to quick go through uh, just some of those very minor changes. Um, and if you guys want to even get a closer look, it, it probably wouldn't hurt. But um, if you can see kind of where these two, uh, there are two monkey bar apparatuses come together. There's a platform right here. Uh, that would be removed. The big two, um, I guess, uh, big two, things would be the the roofs here and the roofs here they would both be removed now I do think those roofs look look nice and kind of give it a grand effect but uh, when we were going through the bidding process roofs were kind of one of uh, it wasn't a high priority we'll say that because just in the location it's in it's it's nicely shaded there uh, we don't feel like it gets sun um, enough of the day to, to justify spending the extra money on roofs when we can put it into actual playground equipment um, another real simple change here would be, well, let's see if I can find it. There's an arched bridge here that would simply be a, a straight catwalk. Um, so just taking the arch out of it would save money. And then the only other thing that I'm missing here, oh, is, uh, let's see if I can find that now. Okay, where it meets up with this slide here, it's hard to tell in this, but it's a it's raised eight inches from this from this arch bridge. Uh, that would be just lowered, so you'd roll you'd go right onto it, um, and just by taking out that eight inches, it saves us money. So those things I just kind of spoke about, 
uh, would save us save us that money and we could get everything for the eighty thousand dollars and that includes the uh, poured curve and the concrete so does anyone have any questions about that or about any of it yep Scott does that include installation by them that includes a supervised installation um, and actually what our thoughts were and I'll tell you a full installation by them costs an extra twenty thousand um, dollars a supervised installation our thought was to either use a volunteer group like a Friends of the Parks um, or city crews. Now, I will say that Josh Peterson just passed um, our state, actually it's a national playground certification inspection uh, and he just took it a couple weeks ago in November. Um, and, and they strongly suggest, uh, along with vendors, that you do it with city crews, um, people that are used to building things. There's a lot of uh, regulations and a lot of standards that um, volunteer groups are great, but if they're not used to putting things together and building things, it, it might be a little bit of a, a problem. Uh, so, so our plan is to use uh, Josh and, and other city crews to, to help construct this or put it in place. Yes. I noticed on the information that we received, it said something like if shipped in 2000, in 2013. Mm -hmm. Does that mean as soon as? approved they ship it right away so it will be shipped yep and that was a and actually we can hold off to shipping so we don't have to store it uh, but if we purchase and sign the contract um, the pricing will be as as said and actually most of the uh, most of the companies kind of had that in there as if you purchased it this year you'd get it a few thousand dollars cheaper mm -hmm. I talked with Bill and he said don't worry about it um, if you guys do award this bid to us we can get it at this price, whether you get it in February, March, today, whatever. So, right. All right. Thank you. Hey, Aaron, is this a system we can add on to in the future if need be? The space does not allow for much. There. Hey, Aaron. Yes. Just wondering about uh, cameras because I know I've, I've seen quite a bit of vandalism done to playgrounds. Are we going to have any type of cameras right. or anything? We do have fake cameras up in, in some spots and uh, that fake cameras that work. Fake cameras. I won't long. tell you where they are. <laughs> some are real, some are fake. <laughs> Um, ah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cheap water, right yeah, let's start over here. Are we going to have cameras there? Yeah. Or not? <laughs> we we do not have them right now in the plans. Josh, I'll edit that out. Don't worry. I, well, that's a good point, though, Eric. I I agree. I think we should look at uh, some more security down there, via um, whether camera systems or. Or whatever the case might be. I mean, we've done that out at Swan Park, right? And, Correct. Yes. And that's helped a lot as far as the vandalism. Right. Nobody's taken a whole pot machine in a while, have they? So, <laughs> Not since I've been here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, good question. Um, as Aaron said, uh, when you add in the cement that goes around the edge, um, it actually did come in at eighty-seven thousand dollars, and and he did work very hard. With the rep to bring that down under eighty thousand um, dollars, and I hopefully you are all comfortable with that. If you feel that uh, some of the items that have been deleted uh, there, then we would have to look at uh, uh, finding some additional money to do that. Uh, but as Aaron said, uh, probably the biggest expense that we're saving is those roofs and. That is a well shaded area, and it does look a lot nicer with the roofs versus without. But again, you know, um, you're you're still having the pretty much the same amount of equipment there with that lesser amount, and you're staying within the budget. I have a question. Go ahead, Aaron. Um, if we want to install those roofs at a later date, can we do that? Yes, you can. Okay. I am somebody thought, would like to donate. Question. Absolutely. Yeah. Jillian, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little concerned with 
even just the budget of eighty thousand dollars it just seems we have so many playgrounds in the city and to have something so large it just seems redundant i even have you know small kids we go to the park all the time i just feel like it's not necessary i don't know if that's something anybody else agrees with but to do something more smaller scale you know similar to what it it was i mean people go there to enjoy the beach and other things and not just for a playground we have so many other nice playgrounds to go to i feel like we're a very small town and a ton of playgrounds in the city right i i would like to, uh, i guess just to say that uh, you know when we we did the budget breakdown in eighty thousand dollars what was what was allotted when everything uh, did get approved. Um, I will say, uh, just to kind of speak to maybe what this can offer that other playgrounds don't offer, Jillian, is uh, this is a, considered a universal playground, which means it's uh, at least 50% accessible um, to, uh, you know, for ADA standards. Um, we do not have another playground like that in the city. Um, I think that is a... I think that is a, something that we were really missing. And when we're putting in a new playground, I think that's important to include everybody. Um, so that's what I, you know, if you have any other questions. It's hard to argue with that, but it just still seems like it's overdone at $80,000, especially when we had to go back and take out taxpayer dollars to, to fund the project and to keep this such large scale. It just to me doesn't seem right. We do. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? We are looking for uh, a motion. Question. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Paul. Go Can ahead. Can you? I, I guess I'm trying to wrap my head around what what this pro this playground is better than the lesser bid ones. Can you mm -hmm. Can you kind of give me in just a? Um, the others just didn't have the amount of play um, structures. They didn't have the amount of uh, components to it. Um, and they were, you know, when we talk about now cutting some of these very simple things out, that doesn't decrease functionality of it. Um, now you're talking about $72,500, which would be the second lowest, um, and you're still getting... Uh, way more equipment than the only one below that would be the Lee Recreation and Lee Recreation um, is not willing to throw in extra pieces to meet the level of this uh, for no money. What would the what is the cost of that uh, Catwalker Bridge? What, what does that say by changing? We did this all um, this afternoon, and that's a great question, and I, I have asked him to give me a, a new quote with those price breakdowns, and I can definitely send that to you when I get it. Uh, it should be tomorrow or, or anything like that. So if you guys are interested, I can send that over. I was just thinking of all the cuts that one would, you know, might be worth spending a little bit on if it isn't a whole lot. Right, right, okay, point taken. Anything okay. else? Anybody else have any questions of Aaron? Comments? Okay, we are looking for a motion tonight on the equipment. I move for approval of the uh, playground equipment to what's the name of the company? Northland. Northland Recreation. Northland Recreation. So you want a not to exceed in there? Yeah, why don't we do it not to exceed $80,000 because that's what was budgeted. Be all right with that. It's seventy nine nine fifteen. So that too. Yeah. But okay. then there was a lot of changes. Yeah. That but, right. well, so plus that includes the cement. The total amount of the playground. This is just for the playground. The seventy nine nine fifteen. Plus there's another eighty seven hundred. Seventy five hundred. Seventy five hundred for the cement and slab. So this would include. I, I guess you're right. We should. We need to subtract 7500 off of this. Right, so this number is now where it says 79915 This afternoon, with those changes I um, kind of brought up, uh, that number is now 725 and allows for the concrete, uh, the addition of the concrete and uh, poured curb, and that would equal $80,000. Okay, so, and we don't know who we're asking to do that 
concrete curb, are you coming back with that dollar amount? Correct. At yes. a future time? Yes. Okay. So we're just looking at the seventy two five then, Deb. Sorry. Okay. Whatever they said. Not to exceed seventy two five. Right. Do we have uh, a second? Second. I'll second. Here with Paul. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a motion by Fenske, a second by Mayo, that we approve of the South Park Playground bid to Northland Recreation at a reduced amount from what you see in your packet to an amount not to exceed seventy-two thousand five hundred dollars. Any discussion? When would the installation, if actually, happen? Um, it would be ready to go as early as. Um, spring uh, you know depending on when we can get to it but uh, we are kind of recommending that we don't install the playground until the pavilion is done uh, just because we don't think it we don't want a brand new playground up next to a construction site area uh, so it'd be nice to kind of have a grand opening with all of that at the same time which will be end of June uh, July 1 -ish. so have you gotten with the to with our city workers to find out if that's a particular a good time for them to be doing this work I've talked with Roger uh, the street superintendent um, and we had a brief discussion today um, and he said that we would be able to work something out so how many hours is estimated for our city workers to spend we figured uh, we were talking about that today Aaron uh, we figured about 420 hours a ban hour about a week's time with five or six people working <coughs> but there isn't any overtime or anything correct no this would be they would do this when they have available time so really the city workers are a fixed cost they're going to be paid there's no more money being spent because they're helping the project right I guess that would be our in kind towards this. we could count it towards a yeah grant too you're right and oh, have fine. you talked to volunteer organizations <coughs> I'm sorry Dave well, the volunteer organization that we were thinking would do it would be our friends of the parks group okay. um, and they are willing to do it but we feel at this point that that's not the best option okay so dave did you have something else i'm sorry no i'm just saying okay. you know there's a big difference to me in using the city guys if you had to pay overtime you know if you were suddenly they were working 60 hours a week but when you can slot it in and use them and it's kind of a fixed cost i think that's quite a All right, any other discussion? Uh, this is a bid, so we will take a roll call vote. Paul Hagen? Aye. Eric Olson? Aye. John Lockwood? Aye. Paul Mayo? Aye. Alan Keeland? Aye. Scott Prochatsky? Aye. Jillian Peterson? No. Deb Fenske? Aye. Steve Hackett? Aye. And Dave Shambo? Aye. Nine ayes, one no. Motion carried. Okay. Let's move on then to unfinished business. Uh, if you remember, John was uh, tasked with uh, looking at the, the uh, old uh, craft building slash Dushek building that's out in the industrial park to find out if that would be feasible to use as a public works facility so that's what we're going to be talking about now John go ahead thank you uh, Kelly is here from Keller uh, builders and uh, he's uh, he has a thumb drive that he'd like to go through briefly with you we have uh, handed out to you an existing building inspection this is the uh, building at 450 industrial drive uh, that is being uh, looked at there is a preliminary budget estimate to uh, rehabilitate that building for a public works facility. I've handed out a cost comparison sheet of the Kraft Fuchek building. We're talking about the um, pre previous um, analysis for Affinia. And um, we also have identified the uh, a new facility cost, which would be a generic new facility cost to compare to. And then lastly, uh, Kelly does have um, a handout in color of a potential site layout for the 450 industrial drive um, a building layout and uh, elevations and of what that building could look like and he can explain that for you and 
feel free to ask questions and you can go through those. Good evening. I'm Kelly Claflin with Keller. Um, as John said, we did the inspection of the Affinia building previously and, and uh, were contracted to, to uh, inspect this building. Uh, with the inspection was a licensed architect from our, our staff. Uh, we also engaged a structural engineer from Integrity Engineering, a plumbing designer, uh, Riverside Engineering, HVAC consultant designer, Dale O'Connell, and electrical engineer, uh, Bruce Cottrell. Um, the, I just kind of maybe want to hit the highlights uh, on the, the lower portion of the, uh, of the first page there. Right there, thanks, John. Uh, the building was, in, was constructed in 1979 and is in fairly good structural condition. Uh, you know, the steel framing is, is, is very good shape yet. The concrete floors are in real good shape. Uh, they have pitch uh, center in, uh, bays that, that would drain properly for that portion of the building we were uh, projecting would be for the vehicle storage. So, so the drainage would work there. The drains right now are capped off, but uh, uh, they were at one time tied into the to sanitary sewers. So, so that would have to be modified. Um, the roof, we're recommending that the roof be uh, replaced on the whole structure. I'll show you the drawings a little bit later, but uh, uh, typically what we would do is to get some more insulation, we, we'd just go right over the top of that, and then we would, uh, uh, the new addition would be where the peak is and, and slope down to cover it out. So you, you'd have a new roof and, and better insulation. Um, the siding is in fairly good shape, but we would recommend that uh, the siding be all replaced with new metal wall panel. And the reason we'd, we'd recommend doing that is uh, the lower four feet of the building uh, of the garage, that would be the garage part, we typically have make those out of concrete or masonry for the durability. So trucks and vehicles going up to it, you don't bang into the metal wall and, and you know have to make repairs on that. So, so we would recommend doing that and then new, new wall panel uh, above that with, uh, with better insulation. Um, the, the, the H, all the HVAC um, would have to be, uh, it's currently right now you got eight suspended heaters in there. They're old and they would need to be replaced. Uh, there are no exhaust fans in the facility. And uh, there are some ceiling fans, but we would recommend that uh, you put new ceiling fans in for that. The plumbing part of it, um, the sanitary sewer we believe is, is <clears throat> exiting the building at the northwest corner of the building. Um, and, but we're, we're, we don't know exactly the condition of that line and, and the street department was, is gonna check that out for us to see if, uh, if that would need to be replaced to, to the street. But, we factored in some dollars in here that uh, if that needed to be done. Uh, the water system uh, really is, they just had one little uh, restroom in the corner of the building, so that would all have to be replaced. And, uh, but I mentioned before the catch basins and the floor could be utilized. Electrical service, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> the, is a 120, 240 volt single phase. Uh, that wouldn't be adequate to what uh, uh, would be needed to upgrade or, and put the addition on the building, so new service would have to be uh, ran into the building. Um, there's minimal electrical requirements around the perimeter of the building, so, so things would have to be there. The lighting we're saying in the storage is, is uh, basically, uh, it's adequate, but uh, if uh, any kind of repairs would ever be needed in that portion of it, would, we would recommend that uh, that be upgraded. Exterior lighting, there's really not much. It's minimal. Um, and then, we, as I mentioned before, the, up, the electrical service would need to be upgraded. Um, as I, again, kind of recapping, the building is uh, structurally in good frame, uh, in shape. Uh, certainly, uh, we didn't see anything that uh, would prohibit this, uh, this building to be uh, retrofitted and, and added on to, to a public works garage. Um, we, we designed this building, as we'll get into the plans a little bit later, but all the same departments and all the same uh, functions that were at the Affinity uh, buildings. So overall, this is a, it's a very viable option uh, uh, to, to convert this building in, into this. So um, 
that's basically it on the inspection. There's a lot of attachments. I won't get into the detail. I kind of recap the engineer's report, so uh, there's more detail on that. But uh, if we could maybe now get into the, I'll show you the plans uh, of the of how we were proposed to uh, to do the next uh, addition and and uh, remodel. There, okay. Uh, that that drawing there. I'll just kind of just roughly go through this. Uh, um, the, you can see my pointer here. The, the, the floor plan of the building, uh, this is the existing building right here as we have it right now, which would be primarily loose, used for all the vehicle storage uh, of all the equipment. Uh, John and the crew gave us a list of all their equipment, and it, that's the way it is. You'd come in driving in the overhead door here, large overhead door, that'd be the center, and they, they'd go out that way. And the diagonal parking, we, we're we're working on a lot of public works garages right now. We've, we've designed and, and built. Uh, we did the village of Dane last year, the city of Amro. We're working with the city of New London, the village of Little Shoot. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are working on garages right now. Seems to be a thing to do. Um, but all the this area right in here would be the shop where all the repairs would be needed, uh, or the, you know, working on the vehicles. Uh, this area right in here is is the uh, uh, street department. Uh, I'm sorry. This this is the shop area stuff. The offices. There's bathrooms. Uh, the uh, uh, street department here, and then the water department over here in the parks. Uh, the signage and things over there. So again, all the major uh, things that we had in the Affini building uh, are workable here. Uh, John, could we go to the next uh, drawing showing the elevation of the building? As I mentioned before, we talked about having um, roofing over the, the existing building. So, so this elevation here, um, this is the, uh, the north elevation. So this is where the addition would be. This, what I'm showing you right here, that's where the wash bay would be. And uh, here's that drive through on the end. And, Right about here would be the existing roof line, so it's pitched down this way, but we would raise that all up there, so you got a dual sloped roof. You know, less chance of, uh, we talk, We thought about possibly having a little bit of high to low roof that just creates a lot of leakage problems and things like that. So, so this is what, the way that our architect would recommend that we do it. Little uh, masonry, Wayne's coating on the front, we didn't. John told us, you know, this has just got to be a functional building. It doesn't have to win awards in the design and make it look, uh, you know, fancy. It's, it's functional, and that's what we did. There's nothing that's extravagant at all about this building, um, but, but it does meet the, the needs uh, that, that came out of the needs assessment. Uh, John, could you maybe go to the site plan now, the last drawing here? Okay, so this is the site plan. This uh, darker brown or whatever that color is, that's the existing building. This would be the, the new addition. Um, this would be area for, for parking employees and, and visitors if they're coming in here. There is a fenced, this would all be fenced in. There's a fence right here you can barely see to keep the yard secure. Uh, this would be the fuel station, the uh, cold storage building there, uh, salt shed right there. This is outside storage for, you know, for gravel and uh, and uh, wood chips and all that kind of thing. Uh, there, there would be a dock. We'd put a new dock in there because if any of had that, we wanted to have all the same functions in this facility as the other one. So, so we added that in there. And as you can see, that you know it does fit the site. There's not a lot of uh, expansion. Let's say we'd want to, in the future, have to add for, for storage of more vehicles. You could probably get a little bit here and maybe th that's about it. And you don't have a lot of room to the, to the west you're fairly close to that lot line, um, so it can't really be expanded that much, but it certainly does fit uh, this site. As all, you know, so that's basically it on, on the site. Is there any questions about the plans and the, the site before I get into a proposed budget for this? Okay, we also did uh, put together a budget. We're uh, we're pretty good at uh, estimating. As John said, we're, 
we're also a builder. I work primarily in, in municipal projects, uh, you know, fire stations, town halls, public works garages, things like that. We have a, a very experienced uh, estimating department. So with these preliminary plans, we're pretty, pretty good at predicting cost. However, I do want to caution you is that you never really know what the thing is going to cost till you bid it out. Um, you know, public projects have to be competitive bid, and you don't know till bid day. But, uh, but uh, the second sheet of of the cost estimate. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The first uh, item on the report here, um, you know, so it's an existing 20,000 square foot building. We would be um, to remodel that part of it. We're uh, estimating somewhere in the 600 to 800 thousand to get it up to code. I told you about all the mechanical things that would need to get done. Uh, you know, new doors, uh, lighting, HVAC, all that, all that kind of stuff. So we're estimating somewhere between the 600, 600 to 800. We plugged in the 800. Uh, my experience is when you, if you're going to go to the public and tell them what something's going to cost, it's best you, you got enough rather than have to go back and ask for it. Kind of like uh, the parks thing there a little bit. You never know. But it's best to do that uh, up front. I feel confident in that number, that 800,000 is going to cover it. I, we, our estimators said we should be able to do it for that. So, so that's a number I feel comfortable with. Uh, the addition part, the 16,324, we just bid a project for the Hortonville School District, the bus garage. Last, about six months ago, I had $97 in there. Prices have gone up. I don't know. We're, we're busy. People are busy. We're in the valley. We're experiencing material costs going up. And so I used $107 a square foot on that. Uh, so the new addition will be 1.7 million on top of the 800 site work. Um, we're saying that should be around 478. Uh, we we priced out or budgeted out for you folks a new facility, and we're just saying that would be about a hundred thousand dollars less. The whole there's really no asphalt on this site, so so it, everything I showed you on the site plan that was paved, you know. So so there's quite a bit of uh, dollars in that. Um, exterior structures, we went through that. We got 501,000, we're saying that's the salt storage building, that's the uh, cold storage and, and, and that outside, the, uh, the bins for the, for the gravel and the chips and, and things like that at, uh, included in that. Architectural fees, uh, 130,000, just threw that in there, you know, based on what, what Means uh, is doing, and, and I feel that that number would, would, would adequately cover it. Uh, we, we would love to design your facility, um, and maybe we can even do a little better than that. Um, contractor fees, 360. That's, uh, you know, that's uh, what construction management fee. We would, uh, uh, you know, I have a full-time supervision in that, and, and basically there's about a 10% uh, profit and overhead in that. That's normal in the industry. People say they can do it for that. They're... They're hiding their numbers someplace else. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, owner furnished, uh, we're, we're saying that would be about 266. Um, we went through some items. Uh, you know, there's a crane in there. There's uh, just all kinds of maybe a, a uh, welder, uh, compressor, things like that. Uh, to adequately service this facility based on other similar projects that we've done. So, so we allotted that in there. So. Bottom number, we're thinking to to get this up to a nice new facility on that site would be somewhere around 4.2 million if that was built next year. And I know I don't know what your plans are, I'll soon, but I have to figure, uh, you know, that assume that it would be next year. If not, you need to just keep factoring inflation for whenever you decide to go ahead with the project. If you do, any questions? Talk kind of fast and we didn't. Uh... All right. Anybody? Thank you, Kelly.
being around just for a little bit. Kelly, just in case we do have some questions Absolutely. for you. Appreciate it. Well, I, I think I'd like to clarify a point, Kelly. I know I asked John this. Um, there is some expansion opportunity on that site, right? There's that water line that's directly to the north of the building. If you relocated that, you could push that building out to the north a little bit, couldn't you? Yeah, that's true. There is a pretty big gap there. Um, <coughs> that, that, that is true. It would, you know, the, the only thing with that, Henry, is the, you know the dock is on that side there, so you know, if you do that, it, it might, you know, but, but certainly yet, there's some additional expansion that could happen there. A little bit. Yeah. There's an existing water main and a sanitary force main that would be relocated. They're not gravity lines, they're pressure lines, so... They could be moved, um, and I think the key is when we, you know, if and when we do go to design on any of these facilities, we'll look at each of these entities and whether a loading dock is is something that's appropriate um, or not. So, but again, as Kelly said, it is in the Finia plan, so we are comparing it here as well. I have a question. Um, in the past, we've discussed this in closed session. Are we? Uh, are we able to discuss anything about these projects at sure. this point? Okay. Yep. John, is the score footage of the... <laughs> Scott, hold on a second. Oh, Paul, are you finished? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. It looked like you were about to ask another question. Oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Scott. Is the score footage of these two buildings <laughs> roughly the same or... A Finney is a little larger, okay. uh, obviously, because, uh, I mean, we're building within the walls of the building. So... Um, this uh, Affinia did provide, uh, and again, this is kind of micro design, but the Affinia did provide a, a loading area for some vehicles and a drive through for some vehicles that we don't have here. Um, so, from an operational standpoint, it's a little bit cleaner. Um, with this plan, if we have, if we, if we have any type of trailered uh, uh, truck and trailer, it's going to end up parking in, in inside. We'll be parking in the aisle, you know, within the aisle uh, where. The other, um, we had an opportunity to pull it off off on the side. So pretty close. I think we're at 40, 41,000 or something, 42 on the other building, and this is at 36, right. um, 36.3. Um, John, do you want to go through your your worksheet, your sure. spreadsheet? Um, I've updated the uh, this analysis that you've seen. Um, and we looked at this about a month or two ago, and we had a, um, a cost for the craft, what we call craft Dushek building, that was about $200,000 less. So uh, uh, Keller's initial analysis was pretty close to where we're at now, but the 4.2 4 million that you saw today is what's reflected on here. So this number did go up about 200,000. And, um, and I guess, and, and you can hear, you know, the cost estimates that are there, I guess the biggest question, as Kelly said, is really the cost to remodel that existing building and bring that up to um, cost. But So with the Kraft Dushek, again, estimated construction cost of 4.2. Um, the um, estimating a purchase price of 600000 that would be something that would need to be negotiated with that property owner. Um, if we decided uh, to purchase it, that is, that's just an estimated purchase cost. So... Um, if that number is at six or something else, that's to be determined. But with, with that estimated number, we're at 4.8 million. Um, Affinia again, and this is uh, reflecting Keller's previous study. That building was at 3.2 million. You can see the purchase price. Uh, I did get a verification uh, this afternoon or this evening um, that 1.99. Uh, million it would be um, an acceptable offer to them even after the first so reflecting that um, that estimate then is 5.19 million um, and the craft or I'm sorry the new facility uh, is estimated at six six million and that's assuming with this analysis no land costs if there are land costs that would be more um, to go back down on the bottom there I think it's important to look at some other uh, aspects of this because it it's all plays a part in, in a final decision. But uh, with the craft building, the tax revenue is currently non-TIF tax revenue, and that is about $9,800 a year that they are paying into the city. 
um, obviously if the pr city purchased that building that would that would be voided we would not be receiving that I did look at utility operating expenses this is somewhat difficult uh, to do and um, uh, I assume craft would be a little bit uh, higher than the other buildings but with the amount of uh, insulation that we're adding it that probably could be downsized a little bit with new sidewall panels new roof insulation um, we should be having a, a building that's pretty uh, energy efficient with that um, I have an area uh, in a, a column that, that identifies aid and redevelopment of area and this is something that um, we've talked about as a staff is this is the redevelopment or use of this building for public works does it aid in what we would call the redevelopment of that entire area but with the craft building and probably that's probably not the case um, with Affinia uh, that probably is not the case either however with a new facility that may be the case depending on where it's constructed if it's constructed in an area where we're redeveloping removing older buildings and trying to spur development that could be the case I just I guess I'll go back a little bit here tax revenue loss with Affinia is about 40,000 a year um, that is those are real dollars that are going in the TIF district so if that building is remodeled those would be dollars that we would not see going into TIF and with a new facility assuming that we built on five acres of land valued at $25,000 an acre um, that would be approximately $8,200 a year again that may or may not be in a TIF that may be city land that could be so sold at a later date to bring in that revenue or it could be actual land that we purchase uh, for a new facility but ultimately that value is about 8200 for those parameters five acres at 25,000 again the operating expenses I did get some information from Affinia uh, and looked at costs on that building it's a well insulated building relatively newer building um, however it has a high ceiling so there's some additional costs there and a new facility um, will probably be a little bit less than that with a lower ceiling um, reuse of existing building obviously with the craft and the affinity building we are reusing an existing building uh, new facility if we do build do build a new facility it would not be reusing of a existing building however it might be a demolition of an older building and replace it with the new so again that, that may or may not be the case depending on where that's located and we don't know that um, is it a central location to the city that's another parameter we looked at the craft uh, Dushek building is not Affinia is not and central location for a new facility again depending on where that's built we don't know at this time um, it may or may not be centrally more centrally located which has some benefits to the city Thanks. Um, I, we tossed this around a little bit this afternoon, John and Henry and myself, and I thought about it since that time on what direction that we go in next to su see what we want to do. And I think my suggestion to you, Council, is um, the next step for staff is to put together a capital budget um, and I think we plan on doing that uh, at the second meeting in January they're going to present their five-year capital plan um, we're either going to do it at the second meeting in January if that fits in otherwise we're going to use the fourth Tuesday in January to do that I'm hoping that we could just do it at our second regular scheduled council meeting as long as that's not a heavy load for us that night because uh, that we'll, we'll be spending quite a bit of time just on the capital uh, budget and, and how that fits into our um, cost as far as, as affordability and so on as we move forward so at this time what I've suggested to uh, staff is that we include the cost of a public works facility in the capital the five-year capital plan whether that happens in 2014 or whether it happens in 2018 is to be decided obviously by you but we will put it into our capital plan and see how that how that will plan out with our projections and we'll ask uh, uh, 
Brad Vergut to be here to uh, give us a, a, a synopsis of, of what we're looking for as far as including capital in um, at what cost and, and whether um, how that fits into our current budget and, and not only our general fund budget but also our water and sewer fund too. Um, the biggest thing that I think we found out tonight is is that when we look at the Kraft building or the Dushek building, whichever way you want to call it, and the Affinia building, there is a there is a savings with going with the Kraft building, um, obviously, and, and it's not to be discounted that there is a savings. I don't think it's as big a savings as we as some people might have thought when they looked at it originally, but um, um, but there is some savings in going with that building. Now, what are the advantages of the Affinia building versus the Kraft building versus building new? And what are the actual costs if we do go with new? And what's it going to cost for us to purchase land? Or are we going to use city land if we do go with a new project? Those are all things that we're going to continue to discuss. But again, I think it's important for us to, to decide whether we want this project to be in our five-year plan. Okay. And that's what we're going to be doing at next month's uh, second meeting. Okay, how does that sound to council? Mayor, excuse me, by second meeting, you mean second Tuesday in January? The third That's Tuesday. Third, the I'm second sorry. Tuesday. Third, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Our second meeting. Yeah. Remember in January, if you're planning ahead, we already do have a, we have a meeting on the first Tuesday, which is our regular council meeting. Uh, and on the third Tuesday, which is a regular council meeting, and then we also have a, a, a meeting on the second Tuesday, and Brennan has kept us up to date on that too. So we already do have three Tuesdays covered in January. So hopefully that, Henry, that gives you guys and your staff, uh, and that includes uh, all capital requests at that time. So it gives you, I, I know you've been working on it a little bit, but... Uh, that will give you guys uh, over a month to to plan, especially if you don't take off Christmas and New Year's. That's when we get our most work done. Yeah, there you go. Right. Okay. Um, any other discussion on tonight's presentation? I, just like a professional uh, question to to Kelly. I, and I, Kelly, if you would yeah. just stand up at the podium, if he's. Thanks. Just, and time flies because this last time we really talked about this uh, was in depth was back in July. Um, you put a quote of $107 for the new addition. Is that a good number to be thinking about for an entire 36,000 square foot building? Is that does that extrapolate out or? The larger the building, the, the the square footage price does come down. There's some value with with the volume, um, but it's it's not as much as you think. Um, mainly with the the offices are kind of a, a fixed cost. You know that's like about 150 bucks a square foot when you when you do a new office. But certainly the the bigger shop area. Uh, yeah, that square footage uh, comes down. The 107, as I mentioned before, we did a, uh, for the village of, uh, or the Hortonville School District, um, we were, we, we bid that this summer and we're actually going back and, and going to be rebidding it in spring because the cost came in at about 135 bucks a square foot. Now that building was only 10,000 square foot. So that tells you why that square footage can, uh, can vary that range. But um, feel pretty good with that number, um, but on a, on a bigger building, um, you know, Henry, um, it's possible that uh, that square footage cost could come down a little bit. Okay. Any other? John, well, I was just going to say um, that's for the building alone. We have to always remember we have to add in yard work and uh, shop equi or, uh, facility equipment, and you know engineering fees design fees and all that so it's yeah when we talk dollars you got to be careful are we talking entire project or are we talking hard building itself yeah, that's a good point and I I get confused a lot and I think we just have to remember that I have a question um, on the structural 
highlights that you had mentioned on the exterior siding is in fair shape but you want to make some changes to that do you have a cost and how much at that portion I don't have that cost particularly broken down um, our estimators do that but uh, um, we just felt that uh, with the masonry addition on the bottom uh, you know it could be repainted but um, it, you know if it was me spending the money it was it'd be like you're you're you know you're getting the majority of a new building but yet then you're gonna have paint on a on a side and I don't there we just felt it'd be better to recite it maybe it's, I can address yeah. that as well um, if you look at the site layout the entire uh, east side will be gone I mean that's gonna be removed because that's right. part of the addition the, there are three garage doors on the north and the south side of this facility. So we'll be replacing that with one garage door on each end. So you're going to have huge holes removed from that siding, as well as uh, new doors cut in. Um, so, I mean, that, the north and south really doesn't even make sense to retain that. It's 35-year-old siding. The only benefit would be the west side. Uh, the west side siding could be retained and painted. However, we are going to be putting in a four-foot masonry uh, piece on the bottom so block or concrete so now you're going to be cutting that siding to put in a concrete or masonry wall and that's necessary to do the four foot wall yeah for the durability we'd recommend that uh, the, the the drivers we're seeing it we, we typically in all our facilities design that so if they bump it a little bit you won't notice it but if they bump a metal wall you're going to see a big bend in it. So if you decided to cut that one side at four foot and try to match that in, I mean, that's what you're talking about really retaining. So, yeah, I mean, the, the north, south, and east sides aren't, aren't feasible. The west side, possible. Or overlaying it or something. But I, I think it, it, you realize, too, it's 35 years old. So. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions? I have Sure, go ahead. I know I've asked a couple times, but do you see any scenario that we could work with this within this craft building and phase it in and not do it all at one point and make it and make it work, or we could come up with a a longer plan to pay for it? Well, um, I guess I'll address that a couple different ways. Operationally, it would be a step backwards for us. To take our trucks out here and have all our employees somewhere else um, we're doing that now and it's we're at least closer than we are now than having to come out here to get all our equipment um, to operate in this building we will need to have adequate ventilation we can't we can't the heating units are shot I mean we can't operate trucks without adequately ventilating the building without lighting without so I mean if you were to move in tomorrow um, now we're talking six to eight hundred thousand dollars just to bring that up to speed some of the garage I don't even know if the one garage door works on the one end I know one end does um, yeah I would say I mean if 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 we decide to purchase this building I don't think there's any advantage to phasing if we can afford it you know if we can afford this facility I don't think there's any advantage I think it's a disadvantage to phase it um, I think that's the key for us to take this building tomorrow, I, I don't see how that's going to be beneficial to us, operationally or cost-wise. Um, the bathroom, everything is, is the heaters. I wouldn't want to operate those heaters this winter, to be honest with you. Construction costs in phasing do are higher, too, in a, in a phase situation where you get everybody there. You can do it all at once rather than not come back and mobilize. And So you'd get better pricing if you could could do it at once well our, we, our, we'd have no staff there our mechanic wouldn't be there we'd literally be going where we're at now we don't have we would have to operate all our other facilities and then still drive out here with equipment versus at least it's closer in town I I guess I'd rather stay where you're at versus phase well yeah I don't see how phasing benefits us if we're deciding to go ahead with the project mm -hmm. um, then I, we would stay where we're at. If it's a if if this was targeted for a 2017 construction, I don't see that we would have much benefit in putting equipment out here unless it's stored equipment we're not using for the whole season. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just storage. But I wouldn't want to operate out of this building. I don't think that's an advantage to us. 
Well, and, and when you talk about phasing, though, if we talk about this project starting three years from now, if we're going to purchase that building, I mean, we would have to purchase that building before that time. Yes. Then we would have the ability to use that building, but as you said, it wouldn't be used as an everyday uh, facility. It would just be used for storage of things that uh, that you wouldn't that you wouldn't be using for that season. And so that's on. correct. Yeah. So there is some phasing that could be done. You know, we all asked that question, and we all I think we've all thought about that. Yeah. Quite a while, and and. Uh, um, I guess it would be similar to, um, you know, originally when we redid the Parks and Rec building, we were going to have the Parks Director stay in this building and have a separate Parks and Rec building where the Director wasn't even over there and his staff. So, you know, and that didn't make sense to us. So obviously we changed that. It would be like the, the library here and having your librarian and her staff at a different site you know it or, just doesn't work or maybe the public works director here and his whole staff elsewhere around the city all around and, and we, we can't forget either though that as we go through this and john's got a lot of work to do here too but we have these buildings that we're talking about that they're operating out of and he's continued to tell us and we've taken tours of them they're not in great shape you know so if we decide not to do this then we got to look at how do we maintain these current buildings that we have so that they're functional in the future? I'm sorry, Deb, I've that's seen your right. hand a couple no, no, times, okay. but yeah, go ahead. I'm just curious, John, um, do you have a preference? Well, my preference would be new construction. I mean, there, is a, there are pros and cons to that. There's an additional cost, it seems. But obviously, if we built new, we're going to be able to design exactly what we want and where we want and how we want and all of that. Okay. Um, and if you had your choice between the other... Uh, you know, yeah, we talked about that today. Um, well, I can tell you again, there's pros and cons there, but I mean, I think that we can operate out of either of these, the Affinia or the Craft Building, and we've worked with Keller and we work with our staff to get facilities and layouts that, that, that work for us. And uh, I can tell you that I think we can work out of either one of those. And I, my staff would say the same thing. And Parks and Josh has said the same thing, that these will work for us. There are mitigating factors. I mean, one has uh, taken a much larger cost off the tax roll than the other. Um, you know, there's there's mitigating factors. But at my druthers, I would build new. Many cities don't even have the opportunity to consider a used facility. You know, I mean, most cities would be coming forth with, where can we site a new facility? Here's what it looks like. Here's the cost estimate. And that's very typical. Um, I think we happen to have a couple facilities that, or have potential, and and we've tried to make them apples to apples. So my druthers would be a new facility, and we would design it exactly the way we wanted. Um, I think these facilities can work long term for us, and we've worked hard at making sure that that's the case in these designs and estimates. Okay. I think the uh, important part of this too, and let's not forget this that. We really need to have this meeting in January to discuss the capital request, but we also need to look at projections here. We've seen projections once before. Uh, we were told that we could afford it, but it was real tight. You know, it was really, really tight. So I want to take a look again at that. I want to take a look at uh, the sewer budget, the water budget, and make sure that, that that's something that's going to work in here. As much as we need it, we have to be able to afford it before we can do it. So we're not there yet. Don't don't think that by what we've done tonight means that we're going to do it tomorrow. I mean, hopefully we could do it within the five-year period. Hopefully we could do it before that. Um, but again, I think it's very important for us to, again, look at the cost, look at the projections, and make sure that it fits for the city. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. John, thank you for your analysis, too. Anybody else? Okay, we'd be looking for a motion to adjourn then. I would make that motion. Second. A motion by Hagen, second by Keelan, that we adjourn till our next regular scheduled meeting, which is Tuesday, December 17th at 6 p.m., subject to call. Uh, before we do adjourn, everybody, uh, 
this handouts that you got tonight, uh, I have a feeling that we'll probably be looking at them again. So either pass them back or put them on your desk or in your desk so that you have them for future references. So we don't have to reprint those. Thank you, everybody. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, motion carried. We are adjourned at uh, 7, 17 p.m. Thank you.